Infinite Lagrange is a really interesting mobile game, fairly well advertised of late, and is available on Apple, Android, and also for PC. But as with any game that includes a fair amount of detail, understanding what you should be doing can sometimes take a little time. Fear not, the aim of this video is to get you set up and playing the way you want to as quickly and painlessly as possible. And I mentioned that widely advertised advertising budget for Infinite Lagrange, the team over there kindly reached out to sponsor this video. If you're new here, I'm Farrister, and my channel is all about giving you useful or interesting content around games, including, most recently, Infinite Lagrange. Specifically, this video will cover a number of key elements for new or returning players, and I've included timestamps in the video description to help you find exactly what you're looking for. And if you're new to the channel, take a look around and perhaps consider subscribing. That helps you to be notified of future videos as they go live, and helps me to grow the audience. So, before diving into the various game mechanics, it's helpful to just cover off the different resources that you'll see in-game, as they'll be used for various actions in the game. When you log in, you'll see a view of your current resources across the top of the screen. From left to right, you have Metal, Crystal, and Deuterium, which are your standard resources. You can click the top menu for more details on your income sources, and you'll earn these standard resources primarily from your base buildings and from mining. The next orange icon is your action points, which you'll use to perform fleet actions or movements. They regenerate over time at a rate of 20 per hour. Then you've got UE coins, which are a trade type currency. Then Chew Coins, which are the only premium currency which you buy, but are only useful for turning into the final, which is a purple Proxima coin. You don't need to buy Chew Coins at all at the moment. Managing your Proxima coin balance will be really important though, but we'll get to that. Navigation. We'll call this first screen the Map View or Expanse View, since you have overall strategic vision of space around you. You can zoom in and out, and scroll around. The Map View is what you'll use to plan your various operations, which we'll cover in more detail later. There's also a Base View, which is where you manage your own Starbase. You can hit Base in the bottom left to get to it. If you're zoomed out, you might need to hit base twice, as the first will just take you to your base rather than into it. It's worth adding that new players benefit from a 72-hour peace shield on their home starbase, saving you from having your base attacked during your startup phase. When looking at your base, the construction menu becomes available. You have two building slots, meaning you can build or upgrade two space station buildings simultaneously. These can be sped up through use of power-ups. Your base also has different stages, which you can think about as levels, and they are unlocked by upgrading specific buildings, and once unlocked can upgrade your entire base. The stage upgrade doesn't use a building slot, but also can't be sped up through power-ups. It's worth taking a look through the different buildings here, and what they offer. You can plan out your future upgrades. Generally speaking, a helpful focus can be getting your base to level 4, building whatever you need in order to get there. At level 4, it becomes possible to relocate your base, which is often advantageous. Aside from that, when not actively upgrading, then investing in economic buildings, either that increase your mining capacity, or directly generate resources within your base are a good bet. Unlike many other games, in Infinite Lagrange, your base can generate a really helpful amount of resources when fully upgraded. Once you start construction, the timer goes live and starts counting down, which you can speed up using power-ups. Your base generates these power-ups over time, which you can collect from the resource management page in your base. On the bottom right of the main screen, there's a blueprint button. There are different types of ship in Infinite Lagrange. Each type has different ship classes, 
and some ship classes also have different variants. The ship types flow from frigates to destroyers to cruisers and even some larger ships in the later game. The starting class of frigate is the FG300, for which new players soon unlock the multi-role and armoured variants. Both multi-role and armoured FG300s are the mainstay of early fleets. Those variants can be further upgraded in different ways. Firstly, weapon adjustments can be made using weapon upgrades, giving an increase in firepower of up to 30%. Further, the blueprints can be customised with improvements to different modules, depending on how you intend to use the ship. Those improvements are made using tech points, and those tech points are earned by gaining more experience fighting with the ship, or through research, which we'll get to shortly. Found within the research menu on the bottom right are two additional mechanics, the partnership agreement and the financial plan. The financial plan is absolutely key, as it will allow you to invest some of your Proxima coins in order to generate more Proxima coins. Once you've saved up 1000 Proxima coins, grabbing the 320% Dawn financial plan is one of your first buys. That'll give you a daily stipend, assuming you log in, which will pay for the sort of things you'd like to do. There's also the partnership agreements within the Dawn funding scheme. It's also worth grabbing the strategic partnership agreement, but only after you've paid for your Dawn financial plan. The strategic agreement will give you a few extra research crates or Proxima coins as you go up through each level. The research system in Infinite Lagrange is based on crates, most of which you'll buy with Proxima coins, but some of which will be unlocked through quests or the partnership agreement. In terms of what to buy, once you've signed up for the financial plan, it's worth buying the 50% black market tech files for 150 Proxima coins each day. Be sure to manage your Proxima coins so you're able to keep generating them. Once you have a good amount of UE coins, buying the two generic blueprint files on offer each day for 10,000 UE coins is well worth it too, just for the small chance of unlocking ships. At one point, when your Proxima coins are built up, it's also worth looking at the United Tech Files for 799 Proxima coins, but only for the Winged Hussar Destroyer. Once you unlock that, no need to buy any more. Dragging a crate across to one of the two research slots opens the menu. Mostly, it's likely to be full of weapons upgrades with no timer, but you may also find any combination of tech points, research points, or even ship blueprints. Those ship blueprints are really rare, so don't be surprised if you don't see them often, but that's a big part of why you keep researching. And those research points, once you have 15 of them, can be used to get another crate, with a near certain chance of at least a partial blueprint in it. At this point, I'd ask that if you're finding this video helpful, please press that like button. It really helps me to know what content you're finding most useful. Once you've unlocked blueprints, you'll need to actually build ships. Each ship has a one-off resource cost to build, but also a command cost to maintain. That command cost is what stops you from having infinite ships, and your cap can be upgraded through construction improvements in your base. You'll see the ship production screen in your base contains your shipyards, which you can use to build ships. You can queue up multiple ships in each shipyard slot, but only for the same variant. For example, you could queue up two armoured FG300s in the same slot, but you couldn't queue a multi-roll behind it. But fear not, you can unlock additional shipyard slots through construction. You can speed up construction with ship construction power-ups, which are different from regular construction power-ups, but collected in the same way. Fleets are the mainstay of organising your ships when they leave your base, and even a single mining ship leaving will technically form part of a fleet. They're created in one of two ways, either by going into Create a Fleet in your base screen, or as part of when you give an order. 
A fleet is a collection of ships that work together to achieve a task. Generally, economic and military fleets are separate, although in some instances may work together, for example using military ships with high cargo capacity to increase the effectiveness of mining ships. Fleets have a maximum size, meaning once you approach the mid to late game, you'll often find yourself operating multiple fleets rather than a single fleet in being. And your fleet composition does make a difference. In the early game, I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about it, other than understanding it's one reason why the armoured FG300 is so strong. The battles in Infinite Lagrange happen across three combat rows, the front row, the middle row and the back row. Generally speaking, ships in the front row take hits first, so having strong, well armoured ships with high health pools in the front row is good. There are many more complicated mechanics around combat, which as you get deeper into the game you'll start to encounter, but generally that'll keep you right. In order to have ships outside of your base, they must be in an operation area. You can have more of these simultaneously as you upgrade various buildings in your base, and you start out with a square outside your main base as your default operations area. To create an operations area, either hit Create Operation from the bottom of the map screen, or start issuing an order and the game will prompt you to create an operations area first. You can toggle your active operations on the map screen by pressing the operation button along the bottom in order to find out more information about where you've currently got active operations. The key orders you'll issue to be aware of are attack, which self-evidently issues a single order to attack an enemy fleet, guard, which is a specific order to defend a high value location, Blockade is particularly useful as it will essentially guard the whole operations area and automatically engage any enemy fleet which enters the operation area. There's also the dock command which is useful in relocating your base. Finally, there are the mine and build command, with build being really useful once you start to unlock mining stations which can create wider operations areas. Some of these orders are unlocked by various base buildings, so don't worry if they're not available for you just yet. So mining has to happen in an operations area, we've covered that already. On the map screen you'll see various asteroids, some of which have blue or purple colours to suggest what their content may be. You can click each rock to see details of what's inside, and it's worth noting that minerals only have a finite content, so once you've mined them, they're gone. To get at that mineral goodness within, just hit the mine button and either assign a fleet that you already created, or create a new fleet. They'll then be dispatched to go mine that rock, and it's as simple as that. Some rocks do have higher requirements, such as requiring a medium or large mining ship in order to mine them, but you can get to them later. And once you can build mining stations, they will start to increase the number of minerals that you get on each trip. Finally, on the topic of fleets, the AC721 destroyer, which you get through your quest chain, has a considerable cargo hold, which can be used to significantly increase the capacity of your mining fleets. Particularly for small and medium mining ships, once you have that destroyer, consider augmenting your mining fleets with it, it'll have a big impact on your income. Questline and next steps. If you're looking for a good ongoing guide to help you know the sort of thing you should be doing next, following the quest line provided by the main missions tab on the top left is usually solid guidance. Immediate goals should be reaching base level 4 in order to relocate, for both security and for a base docking bonus and also looking for a good union to join. These are like in-game organisations or guilds, and joining a helpful union can be a great platform to exploring the game further. Otherwise, I hope you find this video guide useful, and if so, please press that like button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see future Infinite Lagrange videos. And if you have any questions not covered by this guide, or feedback, 
please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.